Good happy Friday evening, October 30th, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Friday evening, so let's begin. First up, we begin with COVID-19 update. 126 new cases of COVID-19 and two new hospitalizations reported today. COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know? Let's take a look at that information right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 10,884 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 9,015,262 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 482 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 777 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 229,347 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. In Manchester, 137. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 24-24. Now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here, new cases each day in New Hampshire. The purple daily new positive COVID-19 cases in orange, new hospitalization and red deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here, current cases in the purple, total current COVID-19 cases in orange, current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here, total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, orange, total hospitalization, red deaths and blue recovered. And let's take a look at this chart here, positive PCR test rate and daily PCR tests. Let's take a look at this chart here. Age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here. Infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Some granite staters experience first snow of the season. Snow accumulation most likely in higher elevations areas in Monadnock region. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. The day before Halloween, the parts of the Monadnock region looked like they were ready for Christmas instead. Around 3 o'clock in the morning, the snow started to fall. On the roads, while they were wet, the snow wasn't sticking as the temperatures hovered around the freezing mark. Off on the side of the roads, though, it was a different story as the snow blanketed the grass and roofs. By mid-morning, the snow had started to accumulate enough that the plows were out. New Hampshire DOT says there were no problems in treating the roads, but the drivers were still driving too quickly for the conditions. While there wasn't a lot of snow, with parts of the state still experiencing an extreme drought, every little bit of precipitation helps. The snow is not expected to stick around for long, as temperatures next week could hit 60 degrees. As for how residents are dealing with all this, well, the emotions range from isn't it pretty to, well, it was enough for me to figure out where I put all my winter clothes. Now I wish it would go away until after Thanksgiving. Reporting live in Hancock, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Increases 
of COVID-19 cases in Kawas County leads to changes for schools and Halloween. Some schools move to remote instruction. Communities call off trick or treating. Officials in Kawas County are taking the steps to slow the spread of COVID-19, seeing an uptick of cases across the northern part of the state. As of Thursday evening, there were 1,106 active coronavirus cases in the state, including 10 in Berlin and 15 in Colbert. There are also 10 active cases, 8 inmates, and 2 staff members at the federal prison in Berlin. Coas County is considered an area of moderate community transmission for the COVID-19, according to the latest county-by-county county map released this week. With an increasing number of positive COVID-19 tests, Berlin and Gorm emergency management officials moved to recommend residents not to participate in door-to-door trick-or-treating or group Halloween events, including Berlin, now canceled downtown trick-or-treating event scheduled for Friday. Both communities had originally set trick-or-treating times for Saturday. Trick-or-treating was also canceled in Pittsburgh. Plus, Berlin Superintendent Julie King announced Thursday that all public schools will move to remote learning for two weeks because of an increase in the number of cases in the community and that at least one positive test was confirmed within school buildings. The details of this information are still being sorted out. Should you or your child have been in direct contact of anyone testing positive, you will be notified by DHHS, King wrote in a message to the community. School sporting events scheduled to occur the next two weeks in Berlin have been canceled. In addition, White Mountain Community College is moving to remote learning for Friday and perhaps for longer. More testing community transmission seen as number of COVID-19 cases rise in New Hampshire. Daily active cases have tripled since October 1st. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Hey everybody, Sir Lindsey Graham here. Uh, help me if you can. My opponent has been endorsed by Nancy Pelosi. The state epidemi epidemiologist is emphasizing that increased testing is far from the only reason why cases are rising in New Hampshire. Daily active cases have tripled since the start of the month, but the average number of tests reported each day has only increased 12% during that time. Dr. Benjamin Chan says while the state may have some of the lowest numbers in the country, letting our guard down could change that. As community spread, as community transmission increases around the state, um, there will be an increasing number of people, increasing risk to individuals in the community, and you're, you're not always going to know um, who may or may not have COVID-19 in your community. Dr. Chan says the advice to all of us remains the same. Wear a mask, social distance, and wash your hands frequently. Okay, and there you go on that video. and that report. And that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday evening and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and goodbye everyone.